resume reader, Crowsong, and today I will be reading to you from Everlasting War by Cake. Now, on to Chapter 1, Britannia. Father, please, you need to end this war. America, my son, I've tried. Russian Empire won't budge. I've had France talk to Kalmar, and there's no luck there either. Then I'll go to Muscovy, or Haya, and I'll meet the crown prince of Muscovy, the younger man announced. The two were in the throne room of the Angelo Palace. The older man sat on a large throne that was some steps between the two smaller thrones. The throne room was pretty elegant. White marble floors, large windows allowing natural lighting, some large skylights, and a glass dome sat on the ceiling allowing more natural light. Large golden chandeliers sat upon the ceiling, candlesticks residing in them. They weren't used unless it was dark and light was needed but the throne room wasn't used during the night hours anyway. Jewels did dangle off the chandeliers, however, creating rainbow spectacles all over the walls and floor. The older man who sat on the throne was King of Britannia, or United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, and he looked as any old English king would in 1895 would even though it was not 1895. Just slightly more handsome and a head full of hair. A large black cape, a red sash and ribbon, and just the usual. Just the man also wore a crown. The crown had red fabric in the middle and it went well with his outfit and flag. His face was a flag and his skin tone matched that. The flag was referred to as the Union Jack, crosses of white and red residing on a blue background. Nothing too special. Maybe it was complicated compared to other leaders, but it didn't matter. He was recognizable. The younger man was Crown Prince of Britannia, America, or United States of America. Being Britain's eldest son, he had a lot of responsibility. He was hidden from the outside world, just as all other crown princes or princesses. Hell, Hyo doesn't know what three people competing for that title even look like. Everyone has seen America's siblings, just not him. He wore a flag with 13 stripes, alternating in red and white a blue caton, and fifty white stars on that caton. He wore a red uniform with gold embroidery on the mandarin collar and sleeves, a blue silk sash, and white and red belt hugged his waist. A elegant gold cord dipped from his apolate and medal hung in between his collar. He had five medals lined up on the other side of his sash and two pins, or breast stars, under the medals. He wore a black hat, gold olive leaves embroidered on the top of the visor, and gold band wrapped around the cap. A royal emblem sat in the middle. His outfit was pulled off by a saber, the scabbard of the saber having a gold color and the saber's handle resembling that of Rapier's. It's too dangerous, America. I cannot lose you. Father, I can bring us peace. I just need a message to be sent to their kingdom, and request that their crown prince meet me in the Emperate of Hael. The younger pleaded. I've told you, it's too dangerous. You're the crown prince. What will happen to the people if you die? I don't know, but they're dying. Their husbands are dying. Their sons are dying. Their fathers, brothers, cousins, uncles, dad, please. 
I'll speak to your mother. Britton sighed, realizing he couldn't win that argument. Thank you, father, America replied, relief flooding his voice. This quickly prompted him to bow, then leave his father be. So he did so, quickly walking out of the throne room and towards his own room. He was tired. He had spent the day going over updates of the war with his siblings. Sadly, he knew his mother wouldn't allow him to leave, so he asked his brothers, Canada and Australia, to speak to her, to try and convince her. He asked them to bring up their sister, India's two-year-old son, Tuvalu, and their youngest sister, only being twelve, to bring up the fact that Queen Kalamar is having another child and just the end of the year. Just anything to make mother agree. Once he got into his room, he quickly stripped out of his uniform. He put on some shorts and a white top before getting into bed, groaning as he did so. It was a large bed, in a large room, but it was so lonely in there. He always told himself that he had everything, and that because of that, he can't be sad. But he always felt like something was missing. He rolled around for almost an hour before finally getting comfortable and being able to fall asleep. Sleep, however, doesn't treat him well. He never gets enough of it. He always wakes up feeling the same. Lonely, desolate. He had hoped it was just the stress of war that caused this, but India told him it was a person he needed. A person. Something he can't have. Nobody has even seen him. He was a crown prince, after all. And if he got married, he'd need a royal wedding, but then everyone would have to see him. He has to wait until his own parents die, or he could break the social norm of the entire world. He'd rather not, though. He wanted that person to be there, though. But who were they? These questions, these thoughts, they're all America thinks about when he's sleeping. A continuous cycle of torture. How the hell did his father do this? Who the fuck knows? And that's the end of this chapter. I hope you enjoyed. Anyway, I'd like to invite you to join the Discord, which is linked down in the description below. That being said, I hope you have a nice rest of your day, night, or whatever it is for you. Just enjoy your time. And I will see you tomorrow.